Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I believe Miguel Cotto is a definite Hall of Famer. And I like him to win over Delvin Rodriguez. Let's talk about it. I admire fighters who take on all comers. So I have a special place, um, you know, in my preferences for Carl Frotch, Zab Judah, and Juan Manuel Marquez, right? These guys are guys who literally fight after fight, take on A-level talent, right? These guys don't walk away from a challenge. Not surprisingly, when you look at who these guys have fought recently, not even in the distant past, but recently, you'll see that Carl Frotch continues to fight guys with belts. You'll see that Zab Judah just fought Danny Garcia, has already fought Lucas Matisse. You'll see that Juan Manuel Marquez, after fighting Manny Pacquiao more times than anybody else, is now scheduled to fight Timothy Bradley, who, in my opinion, is underrated and might actually take over this era, right? Well, no fighter, in my opinion, the argument can be made, no fighter has fought tougher competition today than Miguel Cotto, right? If you look at Cotto's resume, it's jaw-dropping, right? He's fought Zab Judah. He's fought Antonio Margarito twice. He's fought Manny Pacquiao. He's fought Paulie Malinaji, taking on Malinaji when Malinaji was unbeaten. He's fought Sugar Shane Mosley. He's fought Floyd Mayweather. He's fought Austin Trout. These men are tough men to face, right? They're guys with very advanced games. Cotto has been in the ring with all of them. Now in the history of CompuBox, no fighter has the margin of superiority over their opponents more than Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather typically embarrasses guys in the ring on the CompuBox numbers, right? In recent memory, there's only one fighter who has come within the area code of Floyd Mayweather on the CompuBox numbers in a matchup against Floyd. And that fighter is Miguel Cotto. Now let's put it in perspective. What I'm about to do is a bit wonkish, but let's do it. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to read to you the numbers on Mayweather's last fight against Saul Alvarez. Now keep in mind, Alvarez at the time was an unbeaten fighter going in, right? Understand that Mayweather against Alvarez landed 46% of his punches. 46. Alvarez only landed 22% of his punches. Mayweather landed 42% of his jabs against Alvarez. By the way, we're not talking about Mayweather throwing five jabs in the fight. No, he threw 330 jabs in the fight and landed 139. So Mayweather's pumping a jab, and Mayweather's landing the jab at 42%. By contrast, Alvarez only landed 15% of his jabs. Now let's talk about the power punches. This is the real eye-opener. Mayweather landed better than one for every two power punches he threw. He landed 50 3% of his power punches against Saul Alvarez, right? He landed 93 power punches in the fight. That's 53%. Alvarez landed 31% of his power punches, right? Put another way, over a 12-round fight, 
Saul Alvarez only landed 117 punches. If we do the math, that's less than 10 punches landed for Alvarez per round. Right now, let's talk about his fight against Cotto. And let me just say, this is one of the major feathers in Cotto's cap. We've been talking about Floyd Mayweather statistically dominating opponents, right? His fight against Robert Guerrero, that's another statistical bloodbath, right? Mayweather really not only beats you, he dominates you, according to CompuBox. But against Cotto, things were different. Now, Mayweather won the fight, but Mayweather ended that fight with a puffy face, with a cut on his face. When we go to the CompuBox numbers, we actually realize that the fight was close, right? Mayweather landed 26% of his punches. Cotto landed 21%. Now, compare and contrast Mayweather landing 26% against Cotto with Mayweather landing 46% of his punches against Saul Alvarez. In other words, Cotto defensively is much better than you think, right? Cotto drops 20% off of Floyd Mayweather's connect ratio, right? Let's go further. The jabs. Mayweather lands 17% of his jabs against Cotto. Understand, against Saul Alvarez, he landed 42% of his jabs. Think about it. Right? Here again, Cotto is shaving 25% off of Mayweather's connect rate for his jabs. By the way, Cotto, who's widely known, as a heavy puncher. His left hook is a great punch, right? Cotto has a very healthy knockout ratio. But understand, Cotto is also an elite jabber. Did you know that Cotto matched Mayweather's 17% connect rate on the jab? In fact, if you go through Cotto's career, you're going to see Cotto is actually quite effective landing that jab. And it's a bit surprising because Cotto is throwing the jab with his dominant left hand, right? Because Cotto is a southpaw fighting out of an orthodox stance. Cotto actually lands 17% of his jabs, and he doesn't throw 10 jabs against Mayweather to get to the 17%. No, he throws 177 jabs against Mayweather, right? For all of Mayweather's head movement and shoulder rolls, understand that Cotto's jab was getting through. Now let's talk about the power punches. It's worth mentioning. You know, Mayweather is a guy who in multiple fights against elite competition has landed more than 50% of his power punches, right? Against Saul Alvarez, he lands 53% of his power punches, right? Mayweather is a sharpshooter. He's accurate, right? Remember that number, 53%. Against Miguel Cotto, Floyd Mayweather landed 34% of his power punches, right? Here again, Cotto shaves 19% off of Mayweather's connect rate on power punches, right? Understand 34% that Mayweather lands on Cotto in terms of power punches is very low. When you look at Mayweather's numbers against Guerrero, and against Saul Alvarez. Understand that 34 is very respectable in boxing. <laughs> it's just low for Floyd Mayweather, right? For the great fighters, we have higher standards. Understand, Cotto against Mayweather. And Mayweather's really one of the hardest guys to hit in the sport. Cotto lands 23% of his power punches. So what does it all mean? It means that Cotto, at 32 years old, is above average defensively, right? Cotto is still an elite fighter. Now, I know a skeptic will say, well, isn't it true that when Cotto has stepped up and fought Manny Pacquiao or has fought Floyd Mayweather, Cotto has lost? 
Well, that's the Pacquiao and Mayweather. Let me also point out that not many in the sport have the hand speed of Pacquiao or Mayweather. Delvin Rodriguez does not have that hand speed, right? Delvin Rodriguez also hasn't fought anything remotely close to the level of competition that Cotto has fought, right? Probably the toughest matchup on Delvin's resume is Austin Trout. Well, not only has Cotto fought Austin Trout, but if you study the CompuBox numbers for their two fights, Cotto actually did better than Delvin Rodriguez. Certainly had the higher volume. Understand, too, Cotto is now with Freddie Roach. Now, normally I'm hesitant when a fighter switches trainers and then we're talking about the first fight after the switch. Sometimes a fighter with a new trainer, even an elite trainer, can be a deer caught in headlights trying to remember the new instructions in the ring. You saw that when Amir Khan took on Julio Diaz in his last fight, right? Khan, who's blisteringly fast, looked a little confused at times and looked like he was trying to work out new techniques. But with Cotto, it's different because Cotto, for all of his big slugging reputation, actually knows how to box. You see that with the jab connect rate for several fights. In fact, if you want to see a guy who actually handles Alfonso Gomez, a very difficult slick fighter, go back a few years and look at Cotto against Gomez. Right? Cotto actually is outboxing a boxer. Also, Cotto's older. He's not a young puppy with a new trainer. Right? Cotto actually is a fighter in his 30s who already knows how to box. I think the linkage with Freddie Roach might be inspired because Cotto actually has pretty good foot speed. And the one constant with Freddie Roach fighters is they use their feet. Freddie knows how to accent your footwork. Right? Miguel Cotto at his best, moves around the ring. I think that Gomez fight is probably the best I've seen Cotto. Cotto knows how to move around the ring and he knows how to cut off the ring. Right? Being with Freddie Roach, I think, is going to get him back to that kind of foot movement. Now, there are some problems with Cotto. Right? You know, there are ups and there are downs for all of us. In my opinion, Cotto has stamina issues. Count me among those who feels a bit ripped off by the stoppage in the Antonio Margarito rematch, right? If you look at the numbers, if you just look at the fight, Floyd Mayweather actually closed out the show on Cotto in those last few rounds. In fact, I thought, and I said so here online, Mayweather could have gotten a stoppage in the 12th round. Of course, Cotto got stopped by Pacquiao, I believe, in the 12th round. In other words, Cotto fades a little bit in fights. There is the possibility that Cotto fades a little bit at the end of this Delvin Rodriguez fight. But my point is simply, Cotto, to me, is just the more skilled fighter. Rodriguez has had a problem with shorter boxers, right? He lost to Ashley Theopay. Understand, Cotto is actually a switch. He can outbox you. He can outslug you. Right? If he's landing that left hook to the body, fight's over. It's not going the distance. If Rodriguez is able to defense that left hook to the body, Cotto can actually switch into another gear and actually box. I like Cotto in this fight. I don't believe Cotto is washed up. I think this is a tale of a very good fighter in Delvin Rodriguez fighting a guy who's one cut above in Miguel Cotto. I know Cotto's coming off of two straight losses. Those two losses were to Floyd Mayweather and Austin Trout, who I still say here online, beat Canelo in their fight. Right? So understand... The fact that Cotto has two straight losses coming in really is more a reflection on the quality of Cotto's opposition than it is on Cotto. 
and I encourage you to revisit that Cotto Mayweather fight because, quite frankly, with Mayweather running over guys, certainly in the last two fights, if you want to see Floyd get tested the most he's been tested since the Ricky Hatton fight, then I would say Exhibit 1 is his fight against Miguel Cotto. Cotto had his moments in that fight. I like Cotto here. We'll see what happens. Understand, though, that if Cotto beats Rodriguez here, that opens the door. Because the one thing I know about Cotto is Cotto is willing to take on all comers. Right? So, if, let's say, well, I guess he wouldn't fight Manny Pacquiao because they're both Freddie Roach fighters. But understand, Cotto would love to have a rematch with Floyd Mayweather. And there might come a time when fight fans get so tired of seeing Floyd dominate young puppies like Saul Alvarez <laughs> that they might actually want him to revisit a fight against a Hall of Famer who actually tested him a bit. Also, Cotto is willing to go to 160. 160 is loaded with guys who I consider to be vulnerable. That includes you, Kid Chocolate, Peter Quillen, right? I think Cotto actually would have a chance if he can handle the added weight to give some of the guys at 160 all kinds of problems. So keep an eye on this fight. It might be the reemergence of Miguel Cotto. Understand, too, we keep talking about Cotto and age and all this other stuff. Cotto's actually younger chronologically than Delvin Rodriguez. I'll agree he's been in some wars, no question about it, right? The Pacquiao fight, that was a war. The first Margarito fight, that was a war, no question about it. He's been in some very difficult fights. He has a lot of tread, excuse me, he has a lot of wear on his tires. But understand there is the Cotto who can land a jab with regularity. There is the boxing technician who can actually move away from the slugfest toward a technical boxing match, right? If he uses his legs, changes his game a little bit, doesn't trade as much, he might be in the game for some time. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.